if you don't know what career you want when you graduate, you may have more options than you think. There are jobs in law, finance, IT and management, that are open to graduates from any degree background. Even if you don't know what the practical applications of your degree are, many graduate employers do. They recognize that in those three years you will have developed as a person. You will have matured, gained independence, and learned how to manage yourself, and you'll have gained plenty of valuable transferable skills along the way. What are these skills that your degree will have given you? What are the careers open to graduates from all degree backgrounds? You might have these questions in your mind. In this video we are going to clear all your does about these things. So, let's go to the video. There is no hard and fast rule that says that having a degree makes you a better employee. However, there are some generalizations that can be made about the kind of employability skills that graduates should have acquired during their time in university and the personal strengths they should have had the opportunity to develop. You should have gained a certain amount of emotional intelligence. This may be partly to do with the difference between an 18 year old and a 21 year old. But it may also be because you have lived with a bunch of new people from different backgrounds in an unfamiliar environment. This means that you should have a certain degree of tact and empathy. In employability terms, this makes you good at communicating and a capable team player. You should also have learned good written communication skills. Whether a lab report, an essay, a research paper, or a scrapbook, you will almost certainly have had to put together written coursework for assessment. By the end of uni you will have written significant amounts of paperwork. What is more, you will have written for a specific audience, whether an examiner or a tutor. Involved here are research skills, planning and organizing notes, time management, independent working and critical analysis, not to mention the ability to clearly get your ideas across in writing. In a similar way you should have learned how to present information, and structure a persuasive argument. Most courses have some form of seminar content, even if it is only a token measure to ensure that, different learning styles are covered. In these classes students are encouraged to share opinions, lead discussions, and even present topics to the class. If this is the case then you should know how to present information orally and visually, as well as how to debate a topic. It should also be a good indication of how you perform under pressure. You should also have learned about deferred gratification, or careful investment. With student tuition fees of up to £9,250 a year, you will almost certainly be graduating with a significant debt. The fact that you have chosen to continue learning for three or four years instead of working, suggests that you were willing to make a significant investment, because you saw the potential benefits. Recruiters are aware of this commitment, and see this as an ability to manage and work towards long-term goals. While some employers ask candidates to have a 2.1, relatively few roles require a specific degree. Typical areas where all degrees are considered include Management Management training schemes can be found in the public sector, for example, the health sector and in local and central government, civil service. Many graduate employers in the private sector also run general management schemes. Consumer goods companies, manufacturing, logistics and supply organizations, utilities firms and retail focused organizations all look for bright, organized graduates to train in different areas of business, commercial development and supply chain management. The information technology business. It's not only for those with computing and programming backgrounds. IT services organizations and technology consultancies often recruit graduates from non-technical degrees for business analyst, consulting and commercial opportunities. These essential midfield roles are the interface between those who focus on the hardcore development work and clients and end users of technology. The finance and professional services sectors. Yes, you can work in finance with an arts or humanities degree, but you obviously need to be happy with numbers. If you want to work in the city, you will need experience, enthusiasm and a high level of numeracy. But the finance sector is more than the city. It includes accountancy firms, large and small, 
financial services, retail banks, insurance, pensions, financial advisory, and professional services, firms that bring together audit, accountancy, advisory, consultancy, legal services and supply them to other organizations. As with management training, many large employers also run finance graduate schemes within their own finance departments. There are some careers where additional training or postgraduate study will help. Conversion courses are typically postgraduate courses, masters or graduate diplomas that facilitate the transition into a particular profession. This course of action is essential for careers where, ultimately, you will have to qualify professionally, for example, law, surveying and medicine, though the latter requires a bit more than a conversion course. For these careers it will be important to look at the qualification path, so that you can choose the right, accredited, postgraduate course. Teaching is another example of a profession, where postgraduate training is a well-established route to qualification. If you are considering teaching, be aware that some providers of training for primary teaching prefer you to have a degree in a national curriculum subject, while for secondary teaching you will need a degree in the subject you wish to teach or a subject that is closely related. However, if you wish to teach in a shortage subject, it is possible to undertake subject knowledge extension courses to get your subject knowledge up to scratch. There are generous, non-repayable bursaries and scholarships available to help with the costs of training in a range of subjects, the amount of money available, and the list of subjects is revised each year. There are various routes to qualifying as a teacher, some of which are work-based, while others are led by universities, but they all involve a significant amount of time in classrooms. The most popular qualification is the Postgraduate or Professional Graduate Certificate in Teaching PGCE. If you didn't have a clear idea about, you have a degree and now what to do, you now have some idea about what you should do. So, if you got this video helpful, please give a thumbs up to the video. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. Subscribe to our channel to get valuable videos like this. Thanks for watching.